So you guys should just Okay, well, welcome everybody. Uh, uh, I know it's just after lunch, so uh, uh, hopefully everybody's had a chance to stand up and stretch. But welcome to our presentation on OpenStack uh, tenant perspectives. So what we're going to do today is talk about OpenStack cloud tenants. And I know there's a variety of definitions of tenants out there. So uh, here in just a moment, I'll give you a little bit more uh, description on sort of our more expansive definition over and above, I'll say just the normal open stack uh, uh, definition really uh, of, of uh, a specific set of applications within the uh, open stack cloud. Um, the reason we wanted to do this presentation today is the three of us, uh, myself, Fred, George, Fred Karras, Georgia Karstensen, and Abhijit Sunil, over the last year have worked with a variety of large enterprise cloud deployments. And the three of us in, in each of those have been involved very much with the tenant side uh, of things and have gotten an appreciation for some of their, their needs, their characteristics, and, and also wants from uh, the cloud of choice, uh, OpenStack. Um, and then finally, uh, uh, because of a lot of this communication that we had with tenants, we uh, heard some very specific needs. And frankly, in the rush to move out uh, large scale deployments in the enterprise, uh, frankly, that some of these uh, uh, tenant voices haven't been, been totally heard. So we're going to spend a little time discussing uh, uh, what some of those uh, needs, wants are, and hopefully get you an appreciation for uh, their role in the cloud ecosystem and, uh, and, and, frankly, their driving role as far as we're concerned. So first of all, about a tenant. Uh, tenants, of course, you know, if you just looked at the dictionary, are really about uh, a person that's renting property, uh, an apartment, or whatever, and has a landlord, but uh, is, is inside of a, a rented domain, if you will, and they're, they're occupying that. Of course, in the cloud environment, um, tenancy or tenants are really defined as any group of application all within their secure, bounded space uh, within uh, a, a virtualized uh, environment. And one of the things that I think hopefully this picture illustrates is the tenants uh, do vote and uh, they have a say, a big say in the direction of the OpenStack uh, cloud implementation. Okay, let's go and take a look at um, uh, the tenant's role in the ecosystem. Uh, there's a big uh, uh, potential to kind of consider the, the, the end all of the OpenStack, of course, as the wonderful uh, software that is released uh, and implemented. And it is actually a very, very uh, a great achievement that the OpenStack community brings uh, out to the forefront in our each revision of the OpenStack uh, software. Uh, however, there's, there's several other very, very important elements. Uh, one, of course, being the data center infrastructure, uh, the, the hardware that the cloud actually operates on. But the third thing, and we're talking about it today, is the cloud tenants themselves, the workloads, the applications, and, and frankly, uh, uh, the, the actual operating business that we're talking about. And, and between the three of these uh, uh, ecosystems is actually the production cloud. So without that, if uh, there is really no cloud uh, that's actually doing anything. So that's a very, very important uh, concept uh, to take away here. And as I mentioned before, our perspective that, that we're coming from is, is each of us were involved in the past year in some very large scale uh, developments and deployments. And working with the tenants, whether it was migrating them, onboarding them, uh, validating their systems on new OpenStack cloud releases, uh, we became intimately familiar with the business, the technical, and the operational needs of these cloud tenants. 
and got that, that appreciation. And that led us to understand that frankly the cloud really is not successful if the tenants aren't successful. So based on that, we uh, decided to go forward and do a bit more structured review of the tenants and the tenants' needs, get their voice through a, a process that led us uh, 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 through interview cycles and so forth with tenants. Essentially, we went and we, after understanding what the uh, tenants' perspectives were and deciding to embark on this project, we went and, and got a, a sample. Now, it wasn't a huge sample, but we're talking about 15 uh, tenants uh, going on uh, cloud systems and went through a series of interviews uh, with these, these tenants. Uh, and the really amazing thing is they were very, very open to us. So if you ask them, they will uh, come back and, and talk. Uh, we, we did a, a series, as I mentioned, of, of uh, anonymous um, interviews, uh, and keeping the, their, their responses, of course, anonymous. Uh, we then synthesized the data, and what we're going to present today is, uh, I'll say a tip of the iceberg, but uh, half a dozen or so specific, uh, you know, top of the list needs that these uh, tenants are currently experiencing and asking for from their cloud provider. And, and one, one last thing I'll mention here before I turn it over to my colleagues is, is all of these tenants were and are on open stack clouds. Some of them were on uh, 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 clouds going back to Grizzly, uh, but some on Icehouse uh, as well. So they're, they're, they're moving forward in sort of the current cloud releases. Uh, and they represented our representa re representation, represent representative, sorry, <laughs> of a number of industries, uh, freight and logistics, healthcare, uh, mobile security, um, online survey systems for webinars, and then a variety of um, enterprise apps and middleware. And once again, these tenants were some serving internal uh, uh, enterprise uh, needs, but uh, a good number of them were actually helping outside of the cloud or outside of the enterprise uh, uh, type of services direct to end customers. So with that, let me turn it over to Georgia. Thank you, Fred. Well, when we start thinking about perspectives from the tenants, we hear all kinds of different words. Some of them come from the IT side, from the OpenStack side. But when you look at what the tenants are saying, most of them are just, just, no, most of them are just talking about things from the business side. They're looking at things like migration, elasticity. They want to be able to run their business. They want scalability. They want to be on demand. They want dynamic. They want governance. They want all the things that really don't have to do with technology. They want all the things that helps them run their business in a better fashion. I'm sure if I ask everyone here, there's going to be a thousand other words, but we picked one of the top ones. Some of the topics, and we had very many topics that we went through, and we picked the top six or seven, and one of the main ones that we heard that were across all the tenants is operations. Of course, when you're looking at operations back in the traditional IT stack, it went all the way down from hardware up to the OS and finally to the application. Now, when you're looking at the new ways of working, even though the, the tenants are responsible for their upper echelon, as you see on the slide, that upper echelon, which is the application, is as complex as some of the whole IT stack in the traditional sense. So they're not really seeing that kind of support. They had their new business, they have a constraint on budget and resources, that's why some of them are moving to the clouds, and now they have to support the complexity of the old IT technology in this new fashion. So what's the problem? Someone moved their cheese, things changed, their way of working. They needed to have a support model now that actually fits in with what they're doing. They wanted to be able to have someone that one stop shop, as they did in the traditional sense, to be able to have that analysis, that support. And if they don't have that support, well, then they need some money to be able to build their own, to be able to self fund and be self sufficient. So, with the asks, um, they want to be able to have an end to end model. 
just as they were used to. They want to be able to fit in that model, to be comfortable, to be able to know exactly what's going on. They want to be able to have that SME. Who do they call? Do they need to call multiple people? They don't want to be siloed. They want to be able to have that ability to get the answers that they need without feeling like it's fragmented. And most importantly, if they can't do that, then they need their operations manuals. They need their training. They need to be able to develop their own self-sufficiency. One of the other topics that we heard about was the ability to share volumes. Um, they wanted to be able to share volumes to be able to have an active, passive relationship. One of the examples that was given is that if they're looking at freight and logistics where they're starting to move um, information from one area of the world to the other, they would like to be able to have from the option of those clouds, wherever they may be, to share that database. So the problem is that there is no easy way to share volumes. When it comes to um, Cinder and Nova, there's an interdependency between those two. Now, I can only speak from the Ericsson perspective. This has been going on for the past few years. And right now, it is um, starting to come into the way. But really, the best practices have made it, there are no best practices that are making it simple across the core teams and the core projects to get together. And therefore, you really need an advocate, an advocate that's strong to be able to bring over these projects, to actually identify the, uh, the value. So the asks of OpenStack, let's have these interdependencies. Let's start establishing these design teams that are across projects that are beneficial. Because of course, when you're looking at it for the future requirements, we're trying to move the intelligence up higher into the application. When we're looking at future um, algorithms to be able to define, instead of attaching the volume, to have the volume self-attached. And now we're looking at having to be able to handshake between the core teams. When, uh, right now, from the Ericsson side, there is a design summit going on where we're going to bring, once again, the ability to have the Cinder requirements and the Nova requirements together so that we can actually move this forward. Help. There's a lot of it out there. A lot. But even for myself, when I was looking, when we started hearing the fact of having volumes attached, when I went on to the OpenStock documentation, it was not very clear if it was supported or not. Was it fully supported? Was it not supported? I reached out to a couple of colleagues. We weren't really sure. And then finally, I had to hunt it down through Ericsson. So there is not only the abundance of information, but it's not really synthesized in a way that the tenants, whom are not always technical, who are looking to run a business and have this revenue stream, may know how to use it. So, what's the problem? Even though the OpenStack community is one of the better communities when it comes to uh, open source for documentation, there is a lack when it comes to the tenants. They want to be able to have user stories. They want to be able to see how can I best use this functionality that's out there to support my business, to support my revenue stream. And whenever they're looking at having specific tenant side information, because of course they're using it, they don't have the budget. They don't have the budget, they don't have the resources to be able to start building that out. So they asks, you know, things are moving at such a fast pace, maybe we can have better documentation. Maybe that documentation has to come from the tier one providers that are moving even quicker, that have a larger gamut of, um, of items that they're using. So therefore the user stories can start getting established, the use cases start getting used. Maybe the best features or what is deemed as the best features can start coming to the forefront to enable the tenants to be able to use it. And of course, the reason why is that instead of focusing always on the documentation from the technology, from the development up, maybe we should start looking at it somewhere along the middle line so that the tenants can also use it to their benefit. And at that, I pass it to Abhijit. Thank you. There you go. Hi, everyone. My name is Abhijit. Um, I'll talk about the next case that we heard from the tenants. And Throughout our survey process, when we talked to, uh, to tenants, uh, more than uh, 15 or so that friend mentioned, we heard one resounding fact that everybody wanted the elasticity and agility that cloud provided for them. And they didn't want to be constrained physically within the cloud or uh, externally to the cloud. And most of these tenants that we talked to, some of them really large, uh, running a lot of uh, VMs, um, they were specifically focused on the scalability that uh, cloud provided for them. For example, they would have a few VMs running through, the, through weekdays, and then um, due to traffic, they would have hundreds of VMs suddenly spawn over weekends. So in order for them to take advantage of this, uh, they wanted the cloud system, the platforms that they were running on, also to give them that kind of agility. 
And a curious thing that they mentioned here was that the VMs did not show consistent performance, even while being spawned on the same environment. And this could be because of the varying uh, hardware platforms across even just one data center. And the current OpenStack features were not usually available to them. And this is, uh, as we'll see later, usually because they are dependent on uh, private um, proprietary releases of OpenStack. Now, many of these tenants, when we talk about going to cloud, it's really different from just adopting Linux over Windows over a period of time in a, in a company due to policy or so. Because a tenant, no matter how much they would want to be on a cloud instantly, there would always be elements that are non-cloud, that are um, external network connections probably that uh, go outside of the cloud. So they might be operating perhaps in like an 80-20 model, maybe a 90-10 model. And this is, this cause, this leads to the fact that cloudification, so to speak, of tenants is constantly evolving and it, it has to evolve. And usually when cloud is put into place at, uh, at, at, at enterprises, this is something everybody is aware of, but is not really taken into consideration for operations purposes. And when we say that our, our applications are now on the cloud, we just assume that everything is on the cloud and everything would work on a same model. And Tenant said that we wanted to actually have a good model for, um, um, for, for, for taking care of ourselves even uh, during a migration process or an upgrade process. They didn't want to have any downtime. Now, we saw uh, from the presentation um, yesterday that Fred gave um, about migration that migration usually causes a lot of hurt uh, because uh, any activity like that use, uh, causes tenants to be uh, down, down for a while, uh, you know, their production environments are affected, things like that. And uh, all of these concerns are not really of the tenants because as far as the tenants, the users of the, cloud are con the, of the cloud is concerned, they just want to be on the cloud and running their production environments. And they don't want to be dragged into the uh, operations loops and development cycles of the cloud that happens in the background. Then, we heard from tenants about the need for them to have a front door to the cloud. Now, when a new tenant needs to come into the cloud, they would often have to just send an email to somebody who, may, who maintains an Excel sheet about which tenants are where and what site and what are their requirements. Then people get into a call uh, together to assess the demands and things like that. And this is usually the structure that happens in any enterprise that begins to put their applications onto the cloud, adopt uh, cloud platforms across their operations, et cetera. But gi given the fact that this has to grow organically, uh, still when an enterprise grows, sometimes this fact that tenants need to manage themselves uh, via, a, a, via a unified platform usually gets left behind. And tenants are usually dragged into all the IT bureaucracy that happens in the background. Like for example, when um, in the same example of a migration, uh, we heard from tenants that they migrated to a new site, but then their networks are not working anymore. And then they had to raise a ticket for it and wait for somebody to actually take a responsibility on that ticket. And then it's the end of the day and it's a weekend and then their production environments are down and there is nobody responsible for these things. So um, like we saw earlier, how Georgia mentioned, Operations also need to evolve with the fact with te cloud tenancy. And what this actually enables us is to put into place a workflow. Now, even um, uh, after a migration or an upgrade process, what happens is tenants usually come back with problems like, oh, I, I named my VMs wrong, and therefore, you know, I, I, I have to now go back to somebody else with an Excel sheet. So, this unified workflow and policy control, enabling tenants to manage themselves, um, ask for more VMs or less, and uh, uh, self-manage themselves, tell the organization who are the owners of the tenants and so forth, uh, is, is really important. And, and this is important in two ways, um, not just for the tenants, but also for the organization, because 
we actually spoke to ten we actually tried to reach out to tenants who ceased to exist in an organization two years ago they were they had development virtual machines uh, running at some point and then eventually they moved on but nobody in the organization knew because they weren't really paying for it and therefore uh, it just happened to uh, be there redundant so this would not just affect the tenants but would highly impact the efficiency of maintaining a cloud as well now following from that we have to consider the fact that inevitably tenants would be on a multi cloud uh, scenario uh, tenants could have development uh, vms at one side and uh, production vms eventually maturing at other sites and uh, this fact is often um, not really viewed seriously uh, because the abstraction is like how fred tried to um, earlier tried to define a tenant many tenants could be part of a bigger project and this could be part of something else in some other organization and no matter what the abstract abstraction level of how things are grouped like users could form a tenant tenants could form a uh, form a project now this could lead to uh, one big project actually managing several tenants across uh, the nation or even the world and uh, how are they going to manage all this now even when we look at implementing open stack it's uh, uh, it's not really feasible for somebody to have administrative rights to uh, to all the OpenStack instances across various sites, and then uh, go into horizons of each of these places to uh, to manage themselves. So, what the tenants tenants told us is that they really needed a single pane glass kind of uh, control mechanism where everything else happens in the background and they are shielded from all the uh, nitty gritties of uh, looking at uh, exactly how all the all the multiple sites are integrated together in the background and they uh, and their architects wanted to look at their uh, their, their workflows and uh, their, their uh, ensure their fail safe mechanisms are, are working to, uh, nicely and um, also when tenants move from one place to the other, um, this could be because of a migration activity or, um, or an upgrade process or uh, one site just was down and they wanted to maintain their production. So if they moved, they said they had to now reconfigure their entire networking end to end at the other site. And this again is uh, leading to the earlier problem we talked about in operations, you know, is, is, is a ticket that was raised and waiting for somebody to take responsibility for it. So the ask is basically to have a unified mechanism for uh, any abstraction level to look at multiple sites across the world, um, all of the technical details that they would need to have their production or development VMs up and uh, continue with their operations despite what happens back in the cloud. Now, this is very evident when we use a public cloud like um, Amazon or something like that. But um, in an enterprise private cloud, the way it has to be implemented surely should be different from how it is in a public cloud. But at least the, the, uh, the operations easiness uh, should be similar. So with this, I um, hand it back to Fred. So hey, thank you. So that's rather interesting, isn't it? I mean, basically, uh, there's two viewpoints. There's a bottoms up type viewpoint, and then there's a top down. And so what we're hearing from the tenants is is really a top down how do i manage how do i control uh, my my application now i want to spend um, uh, just a, a minute talking a little bit about the future uh, and where uh, our uh, tenant uh, sort of requirements uh, needs uh, asks may be coming in the future and why so here's a, an interesting factoid if you look at just the five year span from from last year 2015 to 2020, uh, based on uh, the most recently available research, uh, we're looking at ab at least a tenfold increase in the uh, size, certainly based on, on dollar spend of the enterprise uh, uh, cloud. So, and, and then if you actually even extrapolated another five years out to 2026, it's, it's a 36% it's a year on year uh, cumulative annual growth rate. So the, the point is, the enterprises are now at that threshold, and I think you've heard this throughout the conference, 
of really marching forward with a significant ad, uh, advancement in the size of uh, the enterprise uh, clouds. What's driving this, it's not small and medium business type uh, uh, support and applications, uh, uh, tenants that are going, these are big industrialized uh, systems that are coming into the, uh, uh, into the enterprise uh, private cloud. They're very, very, very sophisticated systems. And uh, our projection is this is going to lead to even significantly more uh, requests, wants, requirements from the tenant community. Uh, I've listed here just a few uh, uh, that uh, we, we've heard hints of uh, in, in working with the tenants. I think we, we already mentioned here about the uh, uh, database volume sharing, but uh, there's, for instance, uh, the logistics company uh, that we, uh, we interviewed uh, literally would have um, uh, the need to connect uh, to their home base uh, uh, volumes and databases, even when uh, the, the uh, a cloud was connected somewhere offshore uh, with the VMs in that cloud back to the sort of home database in, in, in sort of the uh, continental US uh, cloud. Um, we see uh, also a, a rising need for what we call a threshold and predictive scalability. So, uh, I mean, it's interesting, some of the applications that we talked with the tenants literally could have just one or two or three users on them, and then literally within a, a few minutes scale up to 20,000 users on their systems. Uh, this was actually the case with this webinar survey uh, uh, tenant uh, that we spoke with. and. And frankly, what they would like to have is some sort of a, a, a native OpenStack service that would allow them to, to use tool sets to start understanding, hey, when I start seeing my traffic go to these type of levels, that, that give me information so I can start spawning my additional VMs and, and things like that. And then finally, uh, uh, at least in the enterprise uh, clouds that we've been dealing with, there still is not a, a perfected mechanism for uh, in-place upgrades uh, of, of versions without having downtime. Uh, the tenant's demand is as many nines as possible of availability. And it is a big uh, operational disruption when they have to basically shut down one of their availability sites and move to another one. So, be prepared, we're, we're looking in the very near future for a lot more uh, tenant uh, uh, requirements, a lot more features that they can consume. And I suspect this is going to even further accelerate as they start realizing the full uh, uh, kind of uh, functionality and features of the cloud, uh, which they actually uh, like very much. So, our call to action here is let's take care of these OpenStack tenants. They're not just technical applications. Yes, they are that, but these are operating businesses. And at the end of the day, very important, they are the ones ultimately that pay the bills. And, and uh, the three of us advocate strongly that the voice of the tenant needs to become a, a real mantra within the OpenStack community and, and have a mechanism to be heard and then acted upon by the community. I was really gratified this morning to hear the focus uh, of the keynote address was so much around various sort of uh, applications, sort of oriented uh, uh, discussions. Uh, we need to keep that up. And then finally, I'll leave you with this, that uh, we've come to realize that unless the tenants are successful, the cloud is not successful. And it's really going to be the key uh, to uh, expansion of the OpenStack uh, clouds as we see this uh, future expansion, I think, uh, really driven in the enterprise. So with that, I thank you uh, all for being an attentive audience. And uh, the three of us, uh, this is a passion of, of ours. Uh, would welcome you to come and uh, uh, contact us. Uh, we're actually uh, looking to do a continued dialogue uh, with, with the tenants that we're heavily involved with and more. 
uh, to, to drive these new sort of uh, tenant requirements into the open stack uh, sort of uh, community and be acted upon. And with that, um, I'd like to ask if there's any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Uh, and use the microphone if you can. Thank you. Sorry. Hi, everybody. Um, so you mentioned having a mechanism by which the, the tenants can have a dialogue with the uh, cloud operators. So this is, in particular, like one of our biggest challenges, right? So we've got a cloud. I'm very proud of it. I happen to think computers are cool. Uh, so <laughs> it, it's fun for me to, to interact with it. But, but it's finding that bridge between the tenants who are always going to have more, faster, better, whiz-bang you know, features from AWS and so on uh, to convince even the more business-minded of them that this is a good idea uh, financially and, and so on. It's hard for me to, what is, are, do you have any recommendations for convincing these folks uh, who, again, pay the bills, they're doing that cool stuff, you know, the, the cloud doesn't do anything without Right. the software running in it. Uh, so do you have any recommendations? What is that bridge? Because that's kind of my present challenge. So here's what, uh, th this is all I can suggest uh, on that bridge is I think structured, some sort of structured dialogue or mechanism. Now, we, we undertook sort of this project simply uh, because we had been doing it in the conduct of each of our jobs. Like I said, it was in terms of really working with tenants on either onboarding or migration type activities. And I was absolutely amazed in the several enterprises, there's several different enterprise uh, clouds we were dealing with. <laughs> These guys were so thrilled, these are real people, to actually have somebody call them up and, and, and talk to them. And it wasn't like I had to pull information out. It was, it came as like opening the floodgates. So I would say uh, uh, what I think would be a good mechanism, whether it's within any individual enterprise as you're embarking on your, your cloud projects uh, or, or in the community itself, but let's just start with any enterprise, is make sure that you've got a, a conduit, a forum, maybe a stakeholder community in your tenants that is actively uh, uh, solicited and part of the sort of, uh, 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 sort of the dialogue as you roll your, your cloud out. It, it really comes down to, I'll say, structured and, and uh, um, you know, very structured kind of dialogue uh, type of methodology. Yeah. Uh, and you wanna... am I gonna be talking to the <laughs> Okay, and also you have to be careful with uh, the feedback mechanism. The structure needs to be there because, as we heard from some of the tenant, the ones that manage the tenants, how do we stop the flood of information, right? If you're getting, if you're already doing 100 things and then you're getting another 200 more, how do you filter to realize which ones are the best for across the uh, tenant group? So those are one of the things. Yeah, right? and I will really say one, one last thing is, is, I mean, it's a typical thing, right, in software development or uh, thing, technical endeavors to have a user's group. <clears throat> so that might be another sort of way, once again, to bring the information in. And uh, just to add to that is, some of the traditional practices of addressing, um, uh, for, like for example, ticketing, et cetera, might not always be the best uh, ways of working for a cloud platform is something that we heard directly from tenants that we talked to. Um, as an example, like I mentioned about, uh, you know, um, if something is not working suddenly after an upgrade or a migration and then raising a ticket for it, waiting for somebody to take responsibility, et cetera, might not be the best, um, way forward for an evolving cloud platform. Uh, so this was a feedback that we heard, and um, so that also adds to that, I think. Cool, cool. Th thank, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that I attended this, because um, I'm, I'm the PTL for the OpenStack UX project, and one of the things that we're driving cross-project is a common set of roles that we can agree on, or personas, and I'd love to, to sit down and talk to you about the tenants, because we do have a tenant uh, persona, but we need to understand a little bit better, and I'd really like to get your feedback on that. One of the things we are doing, in fact, with our personas is we're creating a matrix. So it depends. The persona is highly, it's a contextual thing. The persona changes based on the type of company. Right. 
So um, I'll talk to you guys a little bit after. Very. Please come up uh, yeah, when we finish here. We'd love yeah. to meet you and talk a bit more. To talk more. Oh, I think you know the other question that I had too is um, I think you touched on it. How much of a problem is quotas for you with your various tenant projects, managing quota? Oh, let me, so I'll, uh, uh, so that, that's a rather, so in the, the enterprise private cloud I was involved with, I'll be honest with you, <laughs> they, 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 it was a big problem because I don't think they've, the, the, uh, the enterprise uh, that I'm, I'm specifically been dealing with has come up with a, a, a good method of doing that. I think they oversubscribe, tend to oversubscribe, and I don't think they have a good uh, chargeback for that oversubscription, because if they did, I don't think the tenants would ask for so much, <laughs> yeah. uh, is, is what I found. And so I actually think, despite the fact that ultimately a virtual environment is supposed to ultimately make the utilization better, <laughs> mm -hmm. I actually think that they're way oversubscribed. But that was my experience. I don't know, Abhijit, you've been on the same project. Any yes, comments? I would agree with the same thing. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I'll let these guys go. <laughs> Yeah, kind of on a similar note, and I apologize, I walked in a little late, so if you've already touched on this, but uh, just in terms of managing quotas and tenants across multiple sites, like uh, you touched on the challenges for that, how are you guys addressing those difficulties, and is there some kind of solution that you guys have chosen to kind of automate some of those manual procedures and, you know, approving tenant quotas and going, in, uh, going about that? So I think the first step is to uh, reduce the number of middlemen in this. Now, when we are talking about multiple sites, like especially if from the perspective of OpenStack, uh, you know, we are also talking about who has rights to view what, et cetera. Uh, you know, there would be somebody who is an admin uh, at, at various sites and, and so forth. So consolidating all of that is, 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 is the first step. And then every enterprise is wired uh, differently. And when we are talking about a multi-site uh, tenancy, um, in, in enterprise private clouds across various organizations, um, the business policies and how the technology came to be adopted first and evolved uh, impacts the way that uh, the tenants are located and how they are managed. And we saw this at uh, the uh, at the project that uh, we, uh, we we three together work with. And um, the fact is, when somebody has to look at uh, um, a consolidated view of, of, of uh, for example, a big project who has multiple tenants across multiple sites. When they have to do some adjustments or when they have to um, go through an activity of, um, of, of, of just uh, assessing um, the uh, evolution of how, where they would take their process, take how, how they would manage and uh, direct their traffic or so. Then uh, it's a matter of uh, uh, calling together a lot of people who has information uh, into a lot of different things and then talking all together. So a unified system which is able to view at view all of these together would eventually be the ultimate answer for something like this uh, because there are too many middlemen now and too many Excel sheets with too many people. And I'll, I'll add one other thing to that. So uh, uh, the three of us are, are from Ericsson, so we're in the uh, telecom uh, space. And, you know, in the telecom space, uh, the, in, in, in just there's always the concept of sort of almost, a, you know, the, a system-wide view, the communication system bridge and so forth. But as we get to these, these complex cloud systems that now have multiple networked clouds together, so I might have a very complex tenant that's got uh, an active, active setup in two geographically dispersed clouds and a, a passive, you know, the geo-redundant uh, uh, set up in a third uh, cloud, to actually be able to see that as a system is something I'm not aware that's, that's out there. And uh, frankly, I think it needs to be developed. And what I think is going to have to be developed is some sort of a platform. Maybe it'll be through the OpenStack community, maybe from somebody else, but I hope it's through the OpenStack uh, community. And then it's going to have to be custom configured to whatever the rules, policies, and so forth of the particular enterprise. It'll be a configuration play every time a, a, a specific uh, enterprise implements a complex, uh, you know, multi-site uh, cloud network system. Yes. I, yeah, I was a little surprised the security group administration wasn't mentioned. I mean, from our users, we get a lot. I mean, they're not used to administering firewall rules. Their horizon GUI is very elementary, 
And so we get a lot of any, any, right? That's what customers do. Is there been a lot of feedback on that from the customer base as well? Yeah, why don't you? That one. Yes, there was. They were looking at it from different levels. They were saying about how, because of the security groups, that they weren't getting enough isolation to be able to do the things that they needed in the cloud, how it was carrying over to other areas. So they did mention it, but as we were pressed for time, we kind of picked the top six, but it was really one of their top concerns after these ones. Yeah, and let me, because I'm glad you brought that up so we could mention and build on what Georgia just said. So there was two, two of the tenants that we talked to specifically said, look, we know that the cloud security, we take confidence in the fact that you sort of secured the cloud itself, but we've got this complex system. And frankly, we used to just be an application owner and everything else was taken care of. And now uh, some sort of, uh, you know, our internal firewalls, uh, security policies and rules and how you actually engineer that into their increasingly complex tenant environments, they expressed a, a, a serious need that they don't have, feel they have the, the training and expertise to actually do it. So I don't know if it's a, a, a training uh, a, a, and documentation issue, it's partly that, and probably a, partly a bit of a lack of uh, you know, potential tools that we could provide the tenants as well. So I don't know if that fits your experience, but that was well, our Well, message. yeah, I mean, we, we get that. I mean, like, we, we just see a lot of tenants just open up everything, right, which yes. is bad. And so, like, some of the stuff we're thinking about is templates for applications to say, okay, for this application, create security group templates. You just apply them, and we provide them as part of the, you know, infrastructure. That's a great point, because actually that is almost exactly one what tenant. one tenant that we interviewed specifically said, if you just tell me how to do it yes. and, and then test it, I'll do it, but we don't even know how to do it. Yeah. Yep, we get a lot of that as well. Great. Thank Thanks. you. Are there any more Sorry, yeah. Quick follow-up. Yes. I'm just curious, like, how large uh, are the organizations that you've been working with? I'm just curious if... Uh, tier one. Uh, these are uh, all tier one type enterprises. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, what we would call as Fortune 500 type So very companies. large. Okay. Yeah, right. Thank you. Any others? Well, uh, thank you again for attending. And uh, let's heed and hear the voice of the tenant and uh, uh, going forward in OpenStack. Thank you very much thank for attending. You.